Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And today we're going to be talking about something that every business owner really needs to think about and consider. Or you might be part of a nonprofit organization. You know, we're gonna we're gonna delve into trademark, copyright what it means, why you should do it, all of those various things. So please join me in welcoming Andrea, Andrea Sager to our program today. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about this. This is going to be so much fun. And I do want to point out, not only is Andrea a trademark attorney, she's my trademark attorney. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to be talking about that whole process of what it took to get a trademark. Um, but let me tell people just a little bit about you and then we'll jump in. So Andrea Sager is a small business attorney shaking up the legal industry with her legalpreneur plan that provides all access for her firm for small businesses. After working for a large law firm, working with large businesses, Andrea realized her true passion was helping small businesses embrace and protect their business and intellectual property. In just under two years, Andrea has become the go-to attorney for entrepreneurs, protecting everything from their brand names to their courses and blog posts. Andrea is also the host of the hit podcast, The Legalpreneur. And as I mentioned, she's my attorney. But since she's an attorney, let's start off with a disclaimer. Go ahead and tell us because we are going to be talking about some legal concepts. But go ahead and, and give us the little disclaimer that we need. Yeah, so of course I am a lawyer, but I will not be giving specific legal advice. And by listening to this, it does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you would like to enter into an attorney-client relationship, you will have to speak with me or another attorney offline. Perfect. I love it. I love it. And we'll obviously be giving your information um, so that people can get in touch with you. But you know, this it, everything varies. But yeah, you know, if you if you have questions, folks contact an attorney, whether it's Andrea or someone else. So, you know, let's, let's go back a, a bit in time. Tell us how it is that you got to where you are today and decided that this really is your passion in life. Yeah. So I feel like it's taken so many twists and turns, but basically I started out with my first business in law school. I, okay. I started my first business, not that I you know, was bored or anything, but not that I didn't have anything to do. Yeah, I was just say you're probably busy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, in, in college and undergrad, I made good money. So mm -hmm. I was in ROTC. I mm -hmm. had a job. Like I, I made, I made good money. And then when I got to law school, I had no money. Oh, and no. Yeah. So I was living like the poor college student in law school mm -hmm. and I was like, what? Oh my gosh. Like I have to do something about this. I have to make money. So I started my first business. It was mm -hmm. the women's clothing boutique. Eventually that branched into a brick and mortar store. Wow. And when I was in law school, mm -hmm. I, you know, I scored the big firm job, thought I was set for life. You know, I, I remember that day so clearly, mm -hmm. like I got the job and I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. My dreams are coming true. Da, da, da. And I remember the first week I started at the job, I was sitting there at my desk and mind mm -hmm. you, I'm, if you've ever seen the, so shoot the show suits, mm -hmm. I mean, Oh, loved it. Loved it. I, loved I still it. mourn I, the loss yes, of it. I love uh, that show. Me too. Me too. <laughs> But I mean, that's exactly what it was like. 38th floor. Mm -hmm. I was in Cincinnati. I could watch a Cincinnati Reds game mm -hmm. from my office. We were right above the field. Oh. It was, like it was so perfect, posh, so mm -hmm. beautiful, but I was miserable. Oh no. The and first week. Yes. Because I remember sitting there and I'm like, wow, there's all these old men walking <laughs> around in their three piece suits mm -hmm. and it just clicked. Right. Like, they've been here since they were my age. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't want to be in this office for the next mm-hmm. 30 to 40 years of my life. Mm-hmm. And I will never forget having that thought process. I was like, oh my gosh, like, I'm just now realizing mm-hmm. that like, they've been doing this for 30 to 40 mm-hmm. years. And I just, I just remember thinking like, gosh, I, I don't want to sit here every mm-hmm. single day for the next, you know, however, however many right. years. So from day one, I, I wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. And then having the other business, which I eventually sold, mm-hmm. it, it opened me up to other business owners that Mm -hmm. needed legal help and what they were needing legal help with was trademarks and copyright Mm -hmm. issues. And they would come to me and they're like, Hey, I need help. And most, I mean, it was a big firm. So they had big rates. Mm -hmm. So most of the time they just couldn't afford the rates. Right. But eventually I had somebody who was like, you know what? I don't care how much it is. I just need to get this done. Mm -hmm. I want you to help me. I'm like, okay, cool. So I, you know, I'm this first year attorney Mm -hmm. right out of the gate. I think I'm a rock star. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're going to love me. I have Mm -hmm. all this business and no. Oh no. No. So part of the onboarding process at the firm was a partner had to approve the client, which it Mm. was, to my understanding, it was just like this informal, like just check the box. Like, yeah, can they pay the bill? Do they have a, do they have a, 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 an action? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So they tell me they're like, this is a small business. They're like, small businesses are not quality clients to us and we don't want them. Oh no. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. And I was just shocked because I had all these people coming to me needing help. And I had like, most of the time they didn't want to, they just couldn't afford it. And then finally Mm -hmm. I had somebody that could afford it. And they're like, no, we don't want them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, what the heck? Like I see all of these people that need help Mm -hmm. and nobody to serve them. Right. So that was really my defining moment. Mm -hmm. I know we all have that moment and that was it for me. I remember standing there and this guy, I don't even remember his name. He was like, this is a small business. He's Mm -hmm. like, they're not quality clients to us. Right. Because they're not a long-term big paying client. That was their business model. Right. Right. And I totally get it now, Mm -hmm. Right, but I'm very grateful for all of that because that was my moment. And I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, well, I know I have all of these people coming to me. Mm -hmm. I can't serve them where I am now. Right. So let me go out on my own Mm -hmm. and serve them. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And that was a little, almost two and a half years ago. And I've been loving it every minute since like, it's been it's been wonderful. Like I, I truly get to do what I love every mm-hmm. single day. And I remember, like, I keep telling you, like, I remember all these moments that I had in this office. Cause I just knew I was like, okay, this is not going to work. This mm-hmm. is not going to be a long-term right. thing, but I'm just trying to figure out how do I pivot mm-hmm. from here. Right. And I remember sitting there, I was like, man, I just, I just wish I could be like the go-to person mm-hmm. for small businesses. Right. And now I'm actually living it. And it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Like, I love being able to just sit back and, you know, reflect on what I wish could mm-hmm. happen to now seeing it happen. Right. I love it. You know, and your name was given to me by another attorney. Um, and because when when I thought, you know, hey, I might have a, a problem here. I She's a friend of mine. I went to her and she said, nah, I don't do that. She said, however, I have heard that there is this great woman who does a lot uh, with podcasts. Yeah. Um, she works with them on their, their names, all sorts of things. And so wah, it was a match made in heaven. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah, no, I, um, I work and it's funny how I got into the podcasting space because, uh, originally I, you know, I worked with a ton of boutique owners Mm -hmm. and with attorneys, you have, you have to have, you can't have conflicts of interest. Mm -hmm. Well, very quickly I started to run into conflicts and I said, okay, I have to branch out. Like Mm -hmm. I can't just serve boutique owners. Mm -hmm. And I literally was just, I used to have an old podcast for the boutique Mm -hmm. And I was just like, man, what, you know, how, how am I going to break into Mm -hmm. a new industry? And I literally just, I remember seeing in a Facebook group, somebody was asking about speaking at podcast movement. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, well, let me just go sponsor the conference and I'll, you know, try to speak at the conference and I can become the expert Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. And I, I'm now like seen as, you know, one of the go-to attorneys mm-hmm. for podcasters. Right. So that that's literally all I did. Mm-hmm. People are like, how do you break into new industries? I'm like, you just have to do right. what people aren't willing to mm-hmm. do and 
go to conferences, mm-hmm. not just go to conferences, right. sponsor the conferences. Right. Yes, because then your name is on everything. Yep. And so, you know, clearly this is, is a great business opportunity for anybody. You know, maybe they're a graphic designer, a website oh, designer, yeah. a lawyer, whatever, you know. And and trust me, folks, conference people like to take your money. Yes, um, they do. you know, and they they, <laughs> they have packages. Money. Yeah. You know, if you give us this much, we do this for you. Yep. Um, you know, and and but frequently it really does include speaking at them, um, you know, and, and so that would be what you'd want to look for. Not just that you get your logo in things and that, you know, you get to put a little tchotchke in the bags. You want to speak. Yep. Yeah, no. And what, and so from that experience, I've made it, you know, a priority to sponsor mm-hmm. conferences, which now obviously COVID. Right. Kind now of we have virtual it. conferences. Yeah. <laughs> COVID kind of slowed that down, Mm -hmm. but 2019, that honestly Mm -hmm. was how I grew my business so quickly Mm -hmm. was going to several conferences and sponsoring them, Mm -hmm. getting myself out there. And you honestly just have to think outside the box Mm -hmm. and figure out, okay, what is nobody doing? And it's not just for the big Mm -hmm. corporate businesses. Right. I was the only solo attorney. There Mm -hmm. were other bigger attorneys, Mm -hmm. but they also weren't in the exhibitor hall. Like I had so many podcasters coming Mm -hmm. up to me and they're like, oh my gosh, this is Mm -hmm. amazing. I've been thinking about, you know, trademarking Mm -hmm. the name of my podcast, but here you are in front of me. Cause the thing is people are looking for you. They just don't know how to find you. Right. Yeah. And, and so if you are physically there, it's like, Ooh, (laughs) yes, yes, yes. And it's, it's created so many good connections. Mm -hmm. Like seriously, I I know I'm not here to really talk about business and business growth, but if I can give like Mm -hmm. one business growth tip, Mm -hmm. like conferences, Mm -hmm. like that has been my big go-to is sponsoring conferences. Mm -hmm. Right. And as you said, I mean, it's little to big. I mean, it doesn't have to be a conference where 5,000 people are attending. Maybe it's a half day conference that a chamber is sponsoring or, you know, something like that. I mean, there's a variety of things and and it's just, it is about getting your name out there. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and I know today everybody loves to just talk about, you know, oh, I grew my business exclusively online. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. But guess what? The old school way still works. Right. We still still want to shake hands. (laughs) Yeah. And I was actually just talking to my friend um, last week. I was like, man, Mm -hmm. I miss conferences so Mm -hmm. much. Like, I miss them. Mm Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I miss all the business meetings. Um, You know, I haven't been to one since February. (sighs) Yeah. I know. know. It's crazy. It's like still we're still in March. I know. I know. You know, they said that the pandemic would be over in two weeks. We just didn't know that two weeks would just get squinched. And we're in two, it's, it's, you know, what is Groundhog Day? (laughs) Over and over and over. So, but but yeah. So, but, you know, and, but one of the things is that I think a lot of people in this pandemic are really thinking about their businesses, starting a business, you know, starting a podcast, doing all sorts of things like that. But let's let's do a little bit of basic stuff here first. So tell us what a copyright is. Yeah, so a copyright it protects your creative work. So mm. your and I the way I break it down is copyrights equal content, so creative content, think your blog posts, your photos, your videos, this recording here, Mm -hmm. your, um, your long form Instagram Mm -hmm. captions, your long form LinkedIn posts, the copy on your website, Mm -hmm. your book content, though, if you have your freebies that you create and it's Mm -hmm. full of content, all of the content inside of it Mm -hmm. is protected with a copyright. Right. And then on the other hand, the names, so the Mm. name of the freebie, the name of your podcast, Ah. the things that have unique Mm -hmm. names, that's what's protected with a trademark. Okay. So trademarks equal branding Mm -hmm. names and then copyrights equal content. Okay. And it can be images also like a photographer, you know, there or a graphic designer, people like that. Absolutely. Yes. Designs, your photos, your videos, Mm -hmm. and whenever, so whenever you have an online course, I, we work with a lot of course Mm -hmm. creators. When you have an online course, that's typically eligible for at least two to three copyright Mm -hmm. applications. Right. One copyright being your videos, Mm -hmm. the videos that are involved, Mm -hmm. the downloads. If you have any downloads that are Mm -hmm. involved, Mm -hmm. your photos, the photos that are involved, Mm -hmm. all of those are separate forms of copyright Mm -hmm. copyrights that are protectable. Right. 
You know, and it's interesting that there's federal and then there's state, um, you know, and, and consultants, I, I discovered this, there's different rules for consultants. So this definitely is something that you need to check out with your, your, your attorneys that are familiar with your state. Um, because, you know, I'm, when, when we did, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually incorporated in Colorado, even though we're uh, in um, Georgia, we're still incorporated in Colorado. That's okay. I checked with somebody. They said yeah. that's fine. <laughs> Unless I were making millions of dollars and then Georgia would say, excuse me. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, one of the things that I discovered is, you know, say I write content or develop a logo for a client. And normally you do lots of them, like 10 logos. They pick one. And, you know, and so then it's, okay, who owns yeah. the rest of them? And so I, I had that bite me one time, but I had it bite me in a, in a good way um, because it worked out fine. And in, in the end, we had designed uh, some logos for a, um, a, a photographer. Great logos, fabulous. She picked one. We, we finished it. We went merrily along on our way and did the, the whole rest of the things. Several months later, I get an email from her and she says, oh, my husband liked your know, logo number two so much that he's now using this for his business. And I went, excuse me, oh my gosh. <laughs> you didn't pay for that. And she sent me this very polite email. And she said, because the contract with you did not specify that, according to my husband, who is a trademark attorney, I paid for all of them. And now this was several years ago. Things may have changed again. It varies state to state. You know, I'll, I'll do the disclaimers here too. Um, and so what happened was the payment that we settled on was he, the trademark attorney, rewrote the section of my contract that says, you know, that all concepts, designs, drafts, yada, 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 not selected by the client remain the property of wise women communications. Yeah. Um, and it was just that simple. You know, it's, yep. it's, it was a sentence that, that took care of that. So that's something that, you know, people really need to, to be aware of is because, you know, especially creative people, you know, we're, oh, we're yeah. designing multiple versions of things, you know, taking, uh, taking, you know, maybe you're a photographer taking lots of product photos, all these things, make sure you know who owns what. Yeah, no, that's a huge, huge issue, especially with creatives, because, mm -hmm. you know, creatives, that's what they are. They're creative. Mm -hmm. And that's what they love to do is be right. creative. They don't have the brain power for the legal stuff, mm -hmm. which is not right. anything mm -hmm. not to knock them at all. No, no. But you have to recognize, mm -hmm. even though you are creative, and you're good at what you do, mm -hmm you still have to be, you're still responsible right. for those things, whether mm -hmm. you outsource it or figure it out, mm -hmm. you still have to be responsible for those things. And what happens is what I see all the time is ownership of intellectual property in your contracts. Like nobody knows what it means. I mean, not, I'm not gonna say nobody, but most small business mm -hmm. owners don't know what it means. Right. And if they do know what it means, that's because they've mm -hmm. had a previous issue with it. Right. Yes. Like <laughs> me. Mm -hmm. And you really have to educate yourself because as an online business owner, it's, or, I don't know if you have predominantly online business owners, but if you are a creative mm -hmm. or an online business owner, mm -hmm. chances are 99% of what you're doing is all intellectual property. Right. Right. It's all mm -hmm. intellectual property. And you have to do what you can to protect it. So anytime you're hiring an independent contractor, mm -hmm. by law, mm -hmm. they own the copyright. Mm -hmm. Unless it says in the contract, hey, you know, right. anything we create for you, mm -hmm. you own it. It has mm -hmm. to specifically say that in the contract. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have employees and they're designing things for mm -hmm. you. Now the employer owns it, right? It's the employee doesn't own it as long mm -hmm. as it's within the scope of their duties mm -hmm. as the employee, right. the employer owns it, mm -hmm. but with independent contractors, oh yeah, it gets tricky. Yeah. The contractor owns it mm -hmm. by law and that's the default law. Mm -hmm. You have to draft out of that in the right. contract. Right. Yeah. And like my contract didn't say either way. So, you know, that was, was where, and, and, you know, they, like I said, they were very nice. They were very polite. And I'm sure if I had really said, you can't do that, they would have, have stopped or they would have, you know, compensated me monetarily. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, getting that statement in my contract was better, um, you know, and, and that does bring up the, the one thing that I always want to tell people. And I, I always do is folks, we don't do handshakes anymore. 
Yep. You know, long gone mm-hmm. are those yep. days. You need a contract and that protects everybody. Um, yep. You know, and, and, you know, have things in writing, you know, verbal, you, know, you may have chatted and said, Hey, this is what we're going to write it down, email, whatever, get something in writing because, yep. you know, we, we, we don't always remember, right. Um, you know, and, and so just get it in writing, protect everybody so that there's no yeah. hard feelings. And the thing about contracts is, and so I find it so funny, like we're in the age of like the coaching age Mm -hmm. and I am by no means a coach, but I always find myself coaching people through the fear Mm -hmm. of using contracts. Right. And basically like the whole purpose of a contract is to lay out the rights and Mm -hmm. duties of both parties. Right. That's it. Mm -hmm. Like, I know that everybody has had a bad experience with a contract before, and that's why you have this fear. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, the people you're doing business Mm -hmm. with, they just want to do good business. Right. And if somebody sends you a contract and you're like, oh my gosh, like, what the heck does this mean? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, this looks like they're trying to pull one over on me. Mm -hmm honestly, nine times out of 10, they don't even know what's in their contract. So if if Mm -hmm. you, if you realize like, Hey, this is not like, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. Just let them know and just say, Hey, I would like, you know, I'd like Mm -hmm. to have these changes Mm -hmm. because most likely they don't even know what it means. They don't know what's in there. They Googled it. (laughs) They Googled a contract, right? Yes. Uh Yes. And that's honestly like, that's where we are right now is trying to educate as many business owners as possible, provide them with the templates that they need because it, it just makes things easier, mm-hmm. so much easier for people by getting their hands mm-hmm. on reliable contract right. templates. So seriously, make sure you just, and people tell me all the time, like, oh, why are you just, you know, letting people per- get templates from you? Well, what happens is somebody will come to me, they're starting their brand new mm-hmm. business and they're like, Hey, I need this custom contract. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, great. Like we'll charge you this month, mm-hmm. this much money for it. And then I take them through my whole process mm-hmm. and they don't, they're brand new business owner. They don't right. know what they need. They needed something basic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what ends up happening is they're paying me for a custom mm-hmm. contract, but what they're using is my template anyway. Right. My mm-hmm. template of best practices. Mm-hmm. So they just end up using my template, but mm-hmm. paying me for a custom contract. So because of that, we created the contract right. mm-hmm. which has tons of contract mm-hmm. templates. And that's, I tell people, look, you start here with the mm-hmm. vault. Right. And then you graduate to mm-hmm. a custom contract. Right. You know, especially if, if you're a new business, because you probably will eventually expand to where the contracts are more complicated, oh, yeah. um, you know, and, and then you do need to, uh, assistance. Yeah. And w- a lot of people ask me, well, okay, well, when's the right time to get the custom contract or when do I do this? And basically I tell people, look, inevitably you are going to have some type of issue with your contract, mm-hmm. whether it becomes from my template or right. a custom contract or something you find off Google, mm-hmm. you're going to have an issue. Mm-hmm. But the goal is to just make sure you are keeping up with things that you want to change, right. things that aren't working for mm-hmm. you, things that you want to make sure you add to the contract. Mm-hmm. And then once you have a list of mm-hmm. things, right. that's when you want to go to an right. attorney and say, mm-hmm. hey, yeah, I make, these make these six sh- changes. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's more beneficial for you mm-hmm. money wise, because mm-hmm. you already know like, hey, I would need these changes. Right. It's not, you know, you're not going to mm-hmm. an attorney to say, hey, I need a contract. I don't really mm-hmm. know what I need. Can you fix this? Yeah. Can you fix that? As my mother signs. would say, you're going to get nickel and dime to death. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. 100%. Right. So let's talk trademarks because that really yeah. is, you know, that, that, that is, is the biggie. So, you know, I, when I started this podcast and you are, let's see, program 625, 26, somewhere That's around incredible. there, lots, lots of, lots it. of podcasts. Yeah. Um, we started out um, as the socialite. I was the socialite. Mm. Um, and we only uh, talked about social media. That was great. You know, there was, there, that was, you know, long enough ago that that was when social media really was catching on as a marketing tool, yeah. um, you know, and, and, but it, it did finally evolve to the point where I ran out of people to talk to, mm-hmm. or we were saying the same thing over and over again. And I'd be like, Oh, <laughs> um, you know, and, and so, and the worst thing is if you board the host, right. Yeah. So then I switched to a business program. Um, and I Googled the business power hour and nobody had it. And I thought, well, that's kind of bizarre because I would have thought that would be something that would be a very common name. So I just started calling the program, the business power hour. 
that was great. We had logos made, website, all of those various things. Um, and you know, just kind of went merrily along. And then I thought, eh, maybe I should trademark it. So I did a state trademark. And we'll talk a little bit about the difference between a state and a federal trademark. Um, because it was pretty inexpensive to do it for Colorado. And I thought, ah, eh, you know, nobody's gonna gonna do anything. Well, then I got a letter. I actually got an email. I got an email from a gentleman saying, you have infringed on my trademark. Now, of course, I'm on vacation when I get oh, this email, oh, right? That's, that's the only place. Yeah, you know. And so I responded to him and I said, I'm currently out of the office. I will reply next week. So that way he at least didn't think I was ignoring him. Right. That's well, I look, he has just two of the words from and 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 he provides a consulting service. So, you know, I went to Dr. Google, but in this case, it was, you know, attorney Google and <laughs> was able to respond to him and say, this is not trademark infringement because, um, you know, it was different. He charged, I didn't, all these various things. And, and I said, you know, I'm still more than happy to talk to you about it. If you want me to put a link from my, my page to your website, I'm more than happy to do that. And of course, I never heard from him again. Um, but that made me think, uh-oh. I need to, to really go further. And so that was when I thought, okay, I can, I can do this. So, you know, I go to the, the, the government trademark office website, wasn't taken again, still I'm like, okay, this is cool. I paid. And I think initially it's like $75, right? Something like the that. The filing fee is 225. Or right. Okay. So yeah. So it was 220, must've been 75 in Colorado. So I paid my little $225 because I thought I'm smart. I can do this. And so that was like back in February, January, maybe of this year. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, pandemic hits. And so, you know, but, um, you know, and, and so I, I applied and I got back a, no, we need lots more. You know, we don't, there's a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff about this. We don't like, and I went, I'm not that smart. <laughs> you know? And that was when I found you. Um, and, you know, and, and it was, it was definitely worth the fee that I paid you, um, and you know, everybody can talk to you separately about your fees. It was what I felt was a very reasonable fee, primarily because then I didn't have to worry about it. And I tell people all the time, you know, when you're working, you know, pay somebody to do your website because you don't want to have to worry about it. Yeah. Pay somebody to do your marketing because you don't want to have to worry about it. And, you know, all of these various things. And, and it took longer because of the pandemic. Um, it took us several months yeah. longer just because there wasn't anybody to review. But it was great because you took care of all of it. But I remember, you know, I, I was looking back through the paperwork. They objected to the, they objected to business, they objected to power, and they objected to our because they're all common terms and, and all sorts of things. So, you know, let's maybe, maybe we need to go back just a little bit further. Why should anybody even be thinking about why they should trademark something? Yeah. So, uh trademarks protect your branding right so anything that identifies your brand mm -hmm. pretty much can be protected with a trademark mm -hmm. so if you want to make sure that consumer confusion is not happening right but I, and what i mean by that is somebody's not listening to somebody else's podcast thinking that it's your podcast right. or shopping with somebody mm -hmm. else thinking mm -hmm. they're shopping with you that's the definition of trademark infringement. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, that doesn't even actually have to occur. Consumer confusion doesn't have to occur. Right. There just has to be the possibility of it. The likelihood. Mm -hmm. Yes. The likelihood of consumer confusion. That's what trademark infringement is. Mm -hmm. So because of that definition, you have to look out for not only the same exact name, mm -hmm. but anything similar. Right. And that's where um, your application got mm -hmm. cut up. Deb, right. Because um, it did have those words that are really right. common words. Right. And the thing is, like, you can have very common words mm -hmm. that are still, that can still be protected mm -hmm. with a trademark. Right. But they have to be protected in regards to specific goods or services. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can't just have a general trademark over everything. Mm -hmm you have to actually claim specific goods and services mm -hmm. on your application. Right. So there's 45 different classes of goods and services mm -hmm. within the trademark office. Everything you do falls under at least one class. Mm -hmm. 
So you have to make sure you're claiming the correct goods or services, Mm -hmm. which, and Deb, I commend you because you did a good job on actually getting it filed. You, you won't believe how many times we, I think I found the right one. It's not podcast. Was it, was it media? I don't remember. I I don't remember the exact Mm -hmm. description, but a lot of people don't even get their description correct. Mm -hmm. And so speaking of boutiques and the clothes, the retail industry, Mm -hmm a lot of the boutique owners don't realize that when they have a store, Mm -hmm. they're not actually protecting clothing. Ah. They're protecting the service of curating the goods to sell inside of a store. Ah, So that's where a lot of their applications Mm -hmm. get tripped up. Mm -hmm. But with yours specifically, I think we had, there was power hour and with you, uh, I, I was so impressed with you because a lot of times people that do their application on their own, they see the refusal come through and they're like, oh, that's it. I'm not going to get approved. And they just let it go. Mm-hmm. But that's not the case. You still have an opportunity to overcome the refusal. Right, right. Yeah, we had, I'm, I'm looking back here through it. So there was power hour editing, power hour, power hour, power hour, Bauer power hour, <laughs> poor hour, which I don't know what that was. Poor hour sounds. Oh, it's a, it's a drink specials. Okay, that made sense. Hey, let's let's just switch to that one. Um, but but yeah, I mean there were ones that were were similar, but not. I mean clearly the the, right, the drink right. one was different. But you know, again, you know, somebody might get confused and go, wait a minute, we thought that this was that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we took over your application, provided the response and with the likelihood of confusion refusal, you, we do have to provide a very thorough legal response. Right. right. And, and it was, oh my gosh, was it thorough? <laughs> yeah. We, I mean, that's what we've become the experts at is mm-hmm. just trying to, you know, pick apart the mm-hmm. examining attorney's argument mm-hmm. with literally just like word by word. Right. And the thing about trademarks is it's all, it, you can get down to phonetics, mm-hmm. you can get down to definition. So right. we break apart everything. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I remember you put copies of the websites for yeah. all of those to show, <laughs> you know, that it was different. Yep. No, exactly. Yeah. And luckily we, um, we did win that one. We mm-hmm. overcame it. And now you do have a registered right. trademark on right. the business power hour. You know, and of course, there were several reasons why, you know, why it was, was so important. As you said, it, it protects my brand, mm-hmm. um, you know, because somebody else could have come along and, and named their podcast or something, not even a podcast, the Business Power Hour. Maybe, again, a consulting firm, webinars. I mean, who knows? There's, it, it's kind of generic enough that there could be other things. Um, but what really hit home for me was if somebody else trademarked it. And then came back at me, even though I had been using it for years, I would have been out of luck and I would have had to have taken down everything that referred to the business power hour. So I would have been done. I mean, you know, that's it. My podcast would have been over because I was not going to go through and edit every single podcast and, <laughs> and all of those things. And, and so, you know, that was kind of where that is. So think of this, you know, people with your company name, with, you know, with your tagline, with all of those various things, you know, with your logos, you know, now, uh, you know, a logo is, is obviously going to be copyright, but, um, you know, would you want to have to go back and redo and, and that really was what hit home to me was I was not going to have to basically start over um, because right. I wouldn't have, I would have just said, no, nope, we're done. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, I mean, 10, yeah, even 10 years ago, mm-hmm. trademarks weren't that big of a deal right. for small business owners, mm-hmm. but because everybody's online, mm-hmm. that's why trademarks yeah, are it's such easy a to deal. get confused. It's easy mm-hmm. to get confused. And so let's, I'll touch briefly on the difference between state and federal. Mm-hmm. So in order to be eligible for a federal trademark, which mm-hmm. is what, which is what my firm does, mm-hmm. you have to be doing business in interstate commerce, right. which is the legal jargon. Mm-hmm. And essentially that means in more than one state. Mm-hmm. So with a podcast, you're automatically eligible for trademark right federal mm-hmm. protection because yeah, cause it doesn't just stop at the Georgia yeah. line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. You can stream it, you know, across the country, mm-hmm. across the world. And so really we don't worry about state trademarks unless mm-hmm. we have a specific reason to. And basically that's for local businesses that mm-hmm. don't have an online presence, like right. local restaurants mm-hmm. or a local bookstore, something like that. And that's really the only time you'd 
Mm -hmm. want to consider a state trademark. Right. Otherwise, it's I, mean, I don't want to say it's a waste of money, but if somebody gets yeah. a federal trademark, it's going to trump. Right. It supersedes trademark. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So you really want to go to straight to federal if you're mm -hmm. eligible. Mm -hmm. And on top of federal versus state, when you talk about podcasts, the issues coming up now because there's so many hobbyists mm -hmm. and they don't think about it. Right. They don't realize, oh, I could have this podcast called, you know, ABC and be mm -hmm. infringing on Google, who also mm -hmm. has a, right. a podcast called, a I, I don't mm -hmm. know if they do or not, but a lot but there of is that, that TV station, <laughs> right? <laughs> that that yeah, network exactly. that's ABC. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they just don't realize that even though you're, you, they have a hobby, mm -hmm. it's still trademark infringement. Right. And you're still like, mm -hmm. you're still responsible for the infringement that could occur mm -hmm. by naming your podcast, whatever it is that you're naming it. Mm -hmm. So even though you may be a hobbyist, mm -hmm. you could still get in trouble for trademark right. infringement. So right. it, anytime you're publishing something out into the world, anytime you start to sell something, mm -hmm. you really need to take a look at your branding and figure mm -hmm. out, okay, do I you know, when do I want to file this mm -hmm. trademark application? Because it, it needs to happen. Like mm -hmm. we've, I've had clients that came to me after being in business for 10 years. I had this one client in particular, she had a clothing store for 10 years and she had somebody close to her, I think like an hour away, open up another store. With the Ooh, same, almost that's, the same that's name. too close. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm like, okay, no problem. Like, we'll, you know, we'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. And the first step with us in the trademark mm -hmm. process is doing the trademark search. Right. And we did the search and mm -hmm. we found somebody that started in business after them mm -hmm. filed the trademark, mm -hmm. got the registration. And then she still, I mean, it'd been 10 years. So she, it was too long to even contest right. their trademark registration. Mm -hmm. So that literally is like your mm -hmm. worst right. situation possible. Oh, yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. girlfriend, I'm sorry, but yeah. mm -hmm. now you have to mm -hmm. rebrand yeah. because yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I tell people all the time that are starting out their business. The very first thing is, you know, you've got the, the name you want it to be Google that yeah. and, and see, you know, is it similar to, to something? Is it, you know, and, and then I remember the people that used to cheat, you know, they would, would take a big name and somehow tag into it, you know, like Walmart yeah, and sons, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, things like that. And, and of course, you know, you can't do that either. And, and, you know, the, the thing is the, if you're coming close to infringing on a big guy, the big guy got big lawyers. Oh, <laughs> you know? yeah. And, you know, and, and when they send you that letter, you really don't have any choice. Um, you know, even if your name was Walmart, um, yeah. you know, you, you probably aren't going to be Walmart and sons, um, yeah. you know, and, and, but, but yeah, so it's when you're starting your business or, you know, adding a product line or, or, you know, all those various things that's where Google comes in so handy. And then of course, you know, you can go to the, the, the trademark um, and go to the government, the real one, not all of the ones that there's ads yeah, for and, and all yeah. of those, because they come up way, way higher on the list. Um, you know, check and see if there's something that is there already, because you don't want to start out and then have to change things. You know, even if you're just having to change your stationery and, and you know, and some things like that, um, you know, and, and then of course the other thing is to, to look and see on websites, you know, does somebody have what you want? Um, you know, and, and that's where it's a little tricky now because there's so many, you know, it used to be that you were .com if you were business, you were, and this is probably before your time. If you were <laughs> .org, you had to prove that you were a registered nonprofit. Yeah. Um, you know, all of these various things. And now you can have basically dot anything. Yeah. So that's where it gets complicated is, you know, that the, the, we're the business power hour.com, but somebody might decide to be the business power hour dot radio or dot net or, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, and, and so again, you just want to protect yourself by taking these steps. Yeah. And one thing to add there is you have to re also remember again, it's not just the same exact name, right? It can be anything similar. So right. that's where a lot mm -hmm. of people, so I'll, what happens a lot of times is they'll, they'll get the same refusal you did. Mm -hmm. They'll come to us and they're like, look, I searched everything. Mm -hmm. I didn't find anything. I'm like, yeah, but you didn't search for the similar stuff. Right. Somebody like, could be the biz power hour. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's trademark infringement. Mm -hmm. So you really like absolutely search Google search mm -hmm. everything 
and because you want to get mm-hmm. that low hanging fruit. And then you take that to an attorney mm-hmm. once you know, okay, there's no low hanging right. fruit because you don't want to pay me mm-hmm. or another trademark attorney right. to, find, yeah. to find what you could have found. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then that's when you really have mm-hmm. somebody else take it over from there. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is what you mentioned about the other like cheap sites to mm-hmm. file, like legal zoom mm-hmm. and trademarkia and all those other mm-hmm. sites are like a hundred bucks, file your trademark. Mm-hmm. You guys, I am all about DIYing. I work right. with small businesses mm-hmm. every single day. Like you day. said, you have contract it, templates. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so I'm here to tell you, do not pay those companies. Mm-hmm. Go straight to the trademark office if you're going to DIY, mm-hmm. because the only thing you're paying those companies for is to use their specific form. Mm-hmm. Right. They're not a law firm. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it, LegalZoom is not a law mm-hmm. firm. And you're only paying to use their form. Mm -hmm. They're taking what you enter on their form Mm -hmm. and putting it into the trademark form. Mm -hmm. So if you mess something up on their form, Mm -hmm. by law, Mm -hmm. they cannot fix it. Even if they know you messed up the form, Mm -hmm. they cannot fix it. Mm -hmm. So you're not paying them for a service. Like, yeah, you're paying them for a service, Mm -hmm. but it's a bad service. But not the the legal aspects of it. Exactly. And so I tell clients all the time, look, if you want to DIY, I'm... Mm -hmm. right there with you go Mm -hmm. for it but just go straight to the trademark office which is Mm uspto.gov and and you can with legal zoom and the other sites you can upgrade to pay an attorney Mm -hmm. but by the time you do that i mean you're just you're paying more than what you're going to be paying a small business attorney from the beginning because you're paying the markup Mm -hmm. and so i'm all about diying but Mm -hmm. when you diy go straight to the source Mm -hmm. or just hire an attorney right Right. Yeah. You, know, you, you get what you pay for. Exactly. Um, you know, and, and I mean, the, the, a lot of those sites are good for a variety of things, mm-hmm. but you know, sometimes it just needs a little bit extra special TLC, exactly. um, you know, and, and this is your business folks. Um, you know, you don't want to be messing around with it because they really could force you to close your doors, yep. um, you know, or stop using that name or, or do things like that. Um, you know, and, and so that's where it gets tricky is, you, you know, again, you just want to make sure that you're covering things and because this is, you know, everything is online. Don't assume that you can get away with it um, because somebody, you know, it's, it's pretty easy for somebody to have put those terms in and, you know, and, and jump on it first. Uh, you know, they, they, they don't care that you might've been using that business name for 10, 20 years. Mm-hmm. You didn't trademark it. Hey, it seems like a good name to me. I'm going to take it. Um, I've seen you know. that happen too many times. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and that was kind of the, the thing that surprised me was that the time frame really didn't matter. I mean, it wasn't that I could say, but I've done 600 programs. It was like, well, too bad. You hadn't trademarked it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and so that, because that, I, you know, I thought, right. well, wouldn't well, I? The thing, yeah. The thing is, I mean, you could, so let's say, you know, mm-hmm. you, we didn't get this through and somebody filed right. the day before you, let's mm-hmm. say somebody filed the day before mm-hmm. you and they mm-hmm. got approved. You could petition to cancel that right. as long mm-hmm. as you're in business first, mm-hmm. but trust me, you would have spent 10, right. 20, 30 times more money right. mm-hmm. than he would have if you just got the mm-hmm. trademark to begin with. Right. So, you know, a lot of people, they, unfortunately what happens a lot of times as well with clients is, you know, we'll talk to them about the trademark mm-hmm. process and counsel them through everything like, eh, okay, but I'm just going to wait. Cause they don't get, they don't see the urgency. Right. And then, and this happened earlier mm-hmm. during the pandemic, I had a client stalk me on a Friday, oh, no. Friday night. Oh, She's, like calls me, mm-hmm. calls me at home, writes on, writes on my Facebook wall, everything oh, no. because oh. she found somebody using her business name. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I need to get this trademark file. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. I was like, hold up girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm very strict with my weekends. That's mm-hmm. one thing that I, cause I have two young yeah. kids and I, 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 I tell people I will do it, but it costs you a lot more. Oh, absolutely. And that yeah. usually stops them in their tracks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I told this girl. I said, okay, well, if you want to talk to me right now, like it's going to cost this much. Mm-hmm. Or I said, or you can wait till Monday. She's like, okay, I'll wait till Monday. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, mm-hmm. like that's what happens all the, it happens. Mm-hmm. And that's happened so many times when mm-hmm. people are like, oh, I'll just wait. And then they wait and then mm-hmm. something happens and now it becomes an emergency. And it's like, right. well, quite frankly, this isn't an emergency Mm-mm. because there's nothing I can do right now. Right. And those offices are closed. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But, um, yeah, that was, that was a crazy story. So don't wait, you guys No, just get it done. Yeah. And just get it done. 
and yeah. the process takes, so tr- the trademark process mm-hmm. takes quite a while. So mm-hmm. it ended up, I think we started in about February and we just mm-hmm. got the final yep. woohoo last week. Um, because yeah. we held off having you on as a guest until we could go. Woo-hoo! Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it takes out a minimum six to seven months mm-hmm. and then the average is about nine to 10 months, which is what right. yours took. So mm-hmm. it, don't think this is something you can file and mm-hmm. uh, you'll have approved by right. the end of the week. No way. Yeah. There's lots of steps mm-hmm. in the process and it takes at least six to seven mm-hmm. months. Right. So. And then the, yeah, the pandemic did slow it down. Yeah, um, exactly. But, you know, and then one of the things that surprised me is, you know, when, when, when we, you know, cross the, the hurdle of, oh, okay, well, that, that is, that is good. Then it gets published. Yep. And then I would get two five, 10 emails a day from trademark attorneys who were going to help me through the process. Now, of course, I didn't respond. I didn't reply. I didn't do anything. And it was funny because it ranged from like 200 bucks to those that obviously wouldn't say. Um, But yeah, I mean, they just, they saw that it was in this listing and it's just like, you know, any, anytime you say you file with a new business, um, you know, when, and you register a new name, it gets published and then people, I mean, that's how they get business is they go to those listings. And so I just, I thought it was very entertaining because then there were various steps. It was, well, do you know that this has now happened? And so there, this has happened. So you still have to do this. And, and, you know, and, and like I said, I didn't respond because I, you know, it would have just been, you know, Hey, thanks, but I've got it taken care of. But, you know, if, if, if you're doing it yourself, be prepared for that. Or oh, yeah. even if you're working with somebody, just be aware of the fact that all of a sudden it's, and they're not spamming, you know, they're, they're just, you know, they, but you know, it, it, you might not realize you're not dealing with the people that you wanted to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Cause what happens is when you don't have an attorney of record mm-hmm. on your application, there's attorneys. So it's all public information, right, right. everything mm-hmm. on the trademark registry. Mm-hmm. And so uh, other attorneys will say, they'll see that you got this mm-hmm. refusal. I'm like, oh, well, this person needs help. Let me mm-hmm. reach out to see if I can right. help them. So that's what happens. Mm-hmm. And no matter if you have an attorney or not, mm-hmm. you will get spam mail. Mm-hmm. This is spam. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a, it is 100% a scam. Mm-hmm. It's the name is different every time, but it's like of the course. world trademark something oh, yeah. uh-huh. asking for payment and it mm-hmm. comes in the mail. Right. And yeah. we warn every mm-hmm. single client about this. Right. We file their application mm-hmm. and we say, Hey, look, you're going to get this piece of paper mm-hmm. in the mail. They're going to be asking for money. Mm-hmm. Just ignore it. Right. We still, we oh still yeah. I, I got two checks. or three of those and I'm yeah. like, I don't think this is right. Um, yeah. you know, and, and yeah, so it, it got pitched. I mean, it's kind of like, they tell you, you know, the IRS only communicates to you in one way, yeah. you know, same with trademark office. You're not going to get all this other stuff. Yeah. So it's, um, man, we, get, we've had a couple of clients that actually mm-hmm. send a check. Um, luckily they, they're like, Hey, I sent a check, but I wanted to double check with you. I'm like, no, cancel yes. that right cancel now. Cancel that check. Cancel that check. <laughs> yeah. And then mm-hmm. we get clients that are still like reach out and they're mad. They're like, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I, you told me this was all I had to pay. And mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, that's the spam that we mm-hmm. told you about when we right. filed your application. And, yeah. like, oh, and depending okay. on what it could be, they might've just actually got the rights to it. Yeah. You know, and, and then, then you're really up the Creek. Yeah. <laughs> So, but well, now what are the, you know, so we're legal. I can put the little er back on things. Yeah. Um, and so, oh, what actually that does bring, so what is the difference between TM and the circle R? So the circle R is actual, it actually means you're registered. You have the exclusive right to use that Uncle Sam name. has told me I've been blessed. Yes. You have been blessed by the trademark gods. <laughs> and then the TM, that means you claim to have the exclusive right to use ah. that name. It does not mean that you have the exclusive right. It just means mm-hmm. that you're making that claim. Mm-hmm. And then one, and you don't even have to have a trademark application on file. You right. don't have to do anything. You, you can, can just put, put the it, TM there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, then once you are officially registered, you can use the R circle. Mm-hmm. And when I say officially registered, you have to have a federal registration. Right. In, in writing, like I'm, I'm getting a certificate. Yeah. Yes. So cool. Cool. Well, now one of the things is, okay, now that we're official, what if we find somebody who is using the same or a very similar name? Great question. So we, this, 
is something that is an ongoing process once you have your registration. Mm -hmm. So we basically tell our clients, look, this is great news, but now the work's just starting because Mm -hmm. what do you do now? So, and it depends on a couple of things. So if you find somebody that has the same or similar name Mm -hmm. and they're doing the same or similar services Mm -hmm. or selling the same or similar goods, then you need, you may need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. If they're online, Mm -hmm. they have an online presence, Facebook, Instagram, Mm -hmm. podcast, whatever, they have a website, whatever it is, you may be able to just petition where they are online to get their content, their presence removed. However, I don't suggest doing that because Mm -hmm. it can be really detrimental to somebody, especially as a small business owner, depending on- Right, because they could just maybe change their name and go merrily along. Right, so Mm -hmm. typically- so that absolutely can happen. Mm-hmm. However, what I suggest doing, and it depends on your budget, mm-hmm. where you are, you know, in a few different areas. Well, but if you're a strict DIYer, what mm-hmm. I suggest is reaching out yourself. Say, hey, mm-hmm. look, I have this trademark registration. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I just ask that you change your name. Like, I don't want to get attorneys involved. Da, da, da. Right. Hopefully they change their name. Mm-hmm. Some will, some won't. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those that don't, then you want to get an attorney involved mm-hmm. and you can have, you know, the attorney send a letter. We do this all the time. And what we include is that petition online. Mm-hmm. So we don't charge any extra for it if we're already doing work for you because mm-hmm. it's not that much work for us anyway. Right. But I, I don't like to do it unless we've already sent a letter mm-hmm. just because it can right. you try and be nice to start with. I mean, that's the, exactly. that's the big thing. Exactly. So we'll send the letter. Hopefully they'll remove it. If they don't, then we'll just go ahead and petition Mm -hmm. wherever they are online. Mm -hmm. But you have to have that actual registration. If you don't have the registration, they won't give you the time of day. Right. So uh, there's a couple, it's a couple of steps in the process. If Mm -hmm. you, if you don't care to reach out yourself, then just go to an attorney Mm -hmm. and have them send a letter. Um, and then the attorney can take it from there. Mm -hmm. We, um, I don't, We've never, well, I say we've never sued anybody for trademark infringement. We actually just did. I don't actually do the litigation. Mm -hmm. It's just a whole nother ball game, but I work with other attorneys that do Mm -hmm. handle it for us. Um, But we have had one client that did actually file suit. Mm -hmm. Um, But most of the time it does get settled before having to come to that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's, you know, it's a decision that you make, you know, are, yeah, it might be the same name. They might be doing the same thing, but are people really getting confused or, you know, all sorts of things, um, you know, and, and so, you know, it's, it's just kind of one of those things, but, um, but I do want to, you know, hey, we have to chat because there is another one. Um, but, but yeah, so then the other thing is copyright, um, you know, and you mentioned images and, and things like that. And, you know, I run my own agency and I always tell my clients, you know, okay, we, you know, if, 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 if you are providing a picture to me to be used wherever, you <laughs> must prove to me that you have the rights to it. Um, you know, and, and how many times, and sometimes I do this <laughs> on my personal stuff, never my business stuff. You find an image and you right click on it and you save yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. That is, it may be copyright infringement. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and so just, just don't do it, but really don't do it for business. Um, you yeah, know, I know somebody one time who found this great image and I mean, it was, it was a very cool image. <laughs> it was, it was a space image and, you know, and it, it actually was a photo from space and yeah, I mean, wow. it was very cool and they were using it on their website and they got the nasty letter. There was no nice to start with. They got the nasty letter and the nasty letter demanded mini zero a figure yeah. with mini zeros yeah. um and 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 they really had just done a right click on the the picture on the internet they hadn't they hadn't even said hey we got this from um you know all those various places and you know and then and you know they they of course immediately called an attorney and the attorney came to me because he'd never had this and i said yeah they're kind of screwed um and i said my my advice is you get that picture off there now you yeah, know, absolutely. now, now, yeah. um, and you send them a mea culpa and, and they, it actually worked. Um, you know, they, they told them we're terribly sorry. We didn't realize, um, and the, the organization backed down. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, this, this is, and, and what I tell people, this is their work product, you mm-hmm. know, so you're stealing it in, yeah. in many cases, if you're, if you're doing that right click, um, you know, and any more, there are so many sites where you can get images or I tell people, take your own, 
Cause then it's oh, yours. Yeah, <laughs> right yeah absolutely. If you can take your own, if mm-hmm. not, then get a proper license mm-hmm. from the stock mm-hmm. image sites, whether it's your free sites or, right. you know, Adobe mm-hmm. stock photo, wherever mm-hmm. it is, mm-hmm. you can get proper photos right. without mm-hmm. getting in trouble for copyright mm-hmm. infringement. But that's, I mean, that's the number one way mm-hmm. that entrepreneurs get in trouble right. is copyright infringement mm-hmm. by using other people's photos. Mm-hmm. Right. And the thing is, it's so easy nowadays mm-hmm. for people to, so for a copyright owner, a mm-hmm. photographer to just do a reverse image search and right. find all the places. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's the, the coding yeah. that's in there. I mean, it's not just the picture that you're copying. And I think that's what so many people don't realize is it, the, the, it, you, it's not just the picture. There's coding that goes along with it. And in that coding is the identification. Yeah, exactly. And you have to be so careful because what they're, what the photographers are doing is actually running that reverse search, mm-hmm. finding all those people, sending out cease and desist letters with the demand of a payment mm-hmm. and seeing who pays, who doesn't, right. then they'll do mm-hmm. a little bit more, mm-hmm. um, research if people don't pay and say, mm-hmm. okay, who do we want to pursue further? Right. And that that's becoming some, you know, mm-hmm. some people's business model. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and it really is pretty simple to, to do that. Um, you know, and, and, but you know, like I said, you know, it's, it's so easy now to find those images and, and music also, you know, like we've got music at the start of this program. I purchased it and um, I purchased it from uh, from a specific site, and I believe I had to say, and there were different levels of of what it was, and the level that I paid for was under a million downloads. I kind of thought, you know, that that'd be nice <laughs> if we, but but you know, and, and it was really bizarre because it was like zero to a million, a million and up, and I'm like, okay, well, I'll take the you know the under, and so it was just a different price level, um, you know, and and, um, and you know, and and there are still times when you might want to buy an image and have the exclusive rights to it. Um, right. mm-hmm. You know, and, and so, you know, if you're an agency or even if you're a business, you'll think about all those things be, before you do those. Um, but then the other thing, and I was telling you this off the, the air, I'm involved in a nonprofit where we have produced a, a, a book um, and it's now uh, both online and, and um, uh, in, in print and someone, you know, meaning well, she really did mean well, but of course that's, that, you know, gets kind of lost in the shuffle. Sometimes she took some of the images and altered them and then used them for her own use. And we said, Oh no, no, you can't do that. That's copyright infringement. And unfortunately it got a little bit snarky in there, but you know, it is that, you know, is it was, was that right? I mean, because it, you know, people have said, well, you can alter it and then yeah. the copyright no longer pertains. No, that is not true at all. So there's a big misconception around, oh, if you change it up 30%, Mm -hmm. then it's not copyright infringement. There's been never, ever been a case that says that ever. And I remember, (laughs) I remember things like that. Like if you took a a photo and changed it to black and white and reversed it and, you know, all these things, well, then it was no longer the original image Mm -hmm. or cropped it or did things like that. I was like, I don't think so. (laughs) No. Yeah. That doesn't apply because Mm -hmm you own so if you're the copyright Mm -hmm. owner you own the exclusive right Mm -hmm. to distribute it Mm -hmm. and make derivative works from it so anything different that Mm -hmm. derives from that original Mm -hmm. you own it right you own it Mm -hmm. right you know and and of course the the easy thing is ask permission Yep. And, and this is not a do first and apologize later things (laughs) folks you know no ask permission to start with and then give credit. Um, yep. You know, I, I get images from a variety of, of places and they say, you know, now it, 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 it's funny. Some of them require it. Some of them say it's nice if yeah. you, you credit the, the, you know, the, the, the designer, the, you know, whoever it was, um, you know, and, and, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy to follow those rules, folks, you know, just, well, just the, do and that. What's crazy is when it says, credit is required. Mm -hmm. If you don't give credit, that's copyright infringement. Right. Even if it's, so what's happening Mm -hmm. is it's from a free stock photo site. Mm -hmm. Nobody reads the fine print, Mm -hmm. even though it says you got to give credit. Mm -hmm. So they think it's, oh, it's completely free. So let Mm -hmm. me download this and use it. Well, they don't give credit. And Mm -hmm. that photographer who's doing the reverse image search, they see, oh, they didn't Mm -hmm. give me credit. I can sue them for this. Right. So they're still pursuing Mm -hmm. you for money because you didn't give them credit. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, you know, you just mentioned the, the all important words, fine print, because some of them also say, are you using it 
in, 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 where you're going to make money or is say this an education thing or, you know, something like that, because, you know, there's, there's also that, what if you're going to use it for your girl scout troop for a slideshow, well, you just you know, said a all those various things. So education folks mm-hmm. does not mean your online business course where you're making thousands no. and thousands of dollars. No, I'm not an educator. I like no. to think I am, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. Yes. Even though you are coaching and you are mm-hmm. actually educating people, mm-hmm. you are not the form of education that you're talking about. Right. The form of education is nonprofit education. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. your, An elementary right, school, el- a yeah. college, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yes. You, mm-hmm. you do. If you are a coach, if you are a course creator, mm-hmm. if you are creating a new sort of mm-hmm. program and you're making money off of it, you do not fall under education. So right. you said that big one. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to clarify. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, and I'm guessing that that's going to get real touchy because we've got so many people who are now homeschooling um, because there are now companies that are um, like an online tutor. I mean, you know, it's, yeah. it, and, and again, they're not, they're, they mean well. So they're showing the picture of, Hey, this is five different types of cows, but they don't, you know, they didn't, they didn't credit it properly. They didn't have permission. They didn't purchase it, whatever it was that was required to get those pictures of those cows. Yeah. And, and, you know, it comes back to what we were just saying, do it yourself or hire it done. I mean, you know, there's certainly so many people out there who are talented artists who can write that, that, you know, that little piece of music for you. They can take those pictures. They can design those graphics. Give those people work right now too. Yeah. And I mean, you're supporting a small business. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, well, oh my gosh, Andrea, tell people just a little bit more about what you do, especially legalpreneur. Yeah, so I own Andrea Sager Law. We are a full service law firm for small businesses. Mm -hmm. We can do pretty much anything you need for your small business. And you can find us at um, Mm andreasager.com, at Andrea Sager Law on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere on social media. And basically, we can do anything. We do your one-off services. And Mm -hmm. we also have our legalpreneur plan, which gives you all access to me and the law firm and all the Mm -hmm. attorneys involved. So you get your unlimited phone call Mm -hmm. or unlimited emails. You get phone calls, document review, you get access to the contract Mm -hmm. vault, you get an extra discount on other services. So the legalpreneur is Mm -hmm. really the go-to plan for small businesses. It's really affordable as well. So, Mm -hmm. oh yeah, I I looked at it and I'm like, holy schmoly, that's (laughs) The monthly fee is less than what some would charge for an hour. Exactly. Let's put it that way. You know, because yep. depending on when somebody listens to this, your your amounts may change. But um, but yeah, you know, it's it really was. And so if you're doing a lot of contracts or things like that where you need an attorney fairly often, this this was great. Or if you just need a one time thing, like oh my gosh, I have this trademark. Um, you know, you yeah, you've got great services. Thank you. Yeah, and people, you know. We, I've literally created everything I've created because of, you know, demand from the audience. And mm-hmm. I just had people that were like, okay, is there any way I can pay to just like ask questions every once in a right. while? So, right. that's, but it's that's not really, really it's I suppose it's a retainer. I guess it I would mean, be I, yeah. essentially, mm-hmm. essentially it's a retainer. Mm-hmm. Um, but what happens is I don't like to charge hourly. So mm-hmm. I don't want to sit there and figure out, okay, you're how not going to go. It? I did nine and a half minutes. <laughs> Right. I, like, I, number one, I'm too lazy to do that. Number two, like, it's very old and archaic mm-hmm. and not right. like I, I left that life. Yeah. I, I was going to say that's that back to the big firm thing. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I don't want to sit there and time how long it takes mm-hmm. to respond to this email. So it's like, look, just email me whenever you mm-hmm. want. I'll respond people. And, you know, I had so much mm-hmm. pushback from other attorneys when I first started. And it's like, look, people got things to do. Like, they're not going to mm-hmm. just be sitting here just to, you know, use my right. time. Right. Like, Yep. People respect your time. Yeah. So, so yeah. well, this has been fabulous. We've, we've been having so much fun. We could go on forever. See, this is why I set a timer, <laughs> um, you know, and, and, but your time is very valuable and, and I appreciate so much what you did, not only for the podcast, making us all legal, um, but also being on the program today. So thank you very much for that. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad we got to do this. And it really just flew by. I know. I know. You know, it, it always does. Um, so it is, again, andreasager.com. Um, she's got a link there to the Legalpreneur site. I'm Deb Creer. I've been having an absolutely wonderful time chatting with my new best buddy, Andrea Sager. Yeah. And until next time, everyone have a great day. See you guys. 
Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.